Greetings, Earthlings. In this video, we're going to go over alphanumeric puzzles. Now, these go by many names, so maybe you, you, you've seen them referred to as number and letter puzzles or many other names, crypto puzzles, whatever. Okay, so and I'll, we're going to go over two examples. This will be the first example. The second example will be below. That will be the second example. And the main point I want to get across is that we're going to scan, which will be our habit, to find a, a good solution. In fact, I actually want to relate this to another habit in this channel, um, um, in this series rather, which is organization. So if you go through the Art of Math playlist, you'll find several videos on organization. And so in fact, these solving these puzzles, the habits you need to do that falls under actually many categories, but I'm just going to present it as scanning. So, and what we're focusing on. So let's say here's our question. So we have B2 times 7B equals 6,396. So if you've never seen these, the way this works is that B is supposed to be a digit from 0 through 9. In this case, clearly it's not a 0 because this is a two-digit number. So in other words, the letters stand for a digit. They don't stand for an entire like two or three-digit number. And we're supposed to figure out what number for B would make this true. And every time you see a letter such as B, it always have to, has to be the same value. So for example, if we said B to be four over here, it has to be a four here as well. All right, so let's discuss two approaches. This is the easier of the two problems we're gonna go over. So approach one is think about what are our choices for B and those are the digits one through nine. As, as I said earlier, zero doesn't work because this has to be a two digit number. Now, in this approach, it looks like we have a lot of options, one through nine, and it can be a, sort of annoying to see, well, does 12 times 71 work? Does 22 times 72, 32 times 73, 42 times 74, and so on. And in, in doing this, our focus is on the full multiplication. So in other words, we're seeing if I plug, pick a value for B here and I multiply my actual two-digit numbers, do I get 6,396? That's very tedious and that is not a good approach. So by scanning or organizing or some cleverness, whatever you really want to think about it as, let's switch our focus from here. So we're going to scan the problem and see, you know, let me make this point. When doing these problems, I think of these like a maze. So if you start at the right spot in the maze, it's going to be very easy. It's going to crack the problem wide open. If you start at the wrong spot, you'll either have a lot of cases and or you just won't be able to solve it. So that's why we're trying to limit our casework. So approach number two, instead of focusing on the entire multiplication of these two numbers and this whole four digit number, let's focus on the ones digit, this six. So why is that so great? Because that limits our options. There are only a small number of choices for B such that two times B will end in a six. So what are those numbers? Well, two times three ends in a six. So that would be B, mean B is three or B could be eight because two times eight is 16 and that would also create a six over here. So we can easily see that three doesn't work because 32 times 73 would be way too low because 30 times 70 is 2,100. So there's no hope that this is gonna get us close to 6,000 something. So let's do 82. So we're gonna have 80, B is eight, so 82 and 78. And um, that looks pretty good because they're around 80, so 80 squared is 6,400. And in fact, if you've been following the entire Art of Math playlist on this channel, you should know how to multiply these two numbers very quickly. That's gonna be trick one from the mental math video. So if, you, if you're not familiar with it, you might wanna go search my channel for mental math trick one, where we go over how to do problem calculations such as this. So in brief, we're gonna take the middle number, which is 80 squared, so that's 80 squared, they're each two away. So that 80 squared minus two squared will be 6,400 minus four, which is indeed 6,396. So this was a toy problem, but the, the point I wanna get across is if you start in the right spot, in this case, starting from the ones digit, it made our life very easy and we limited our casework greatly. All right, now let's go to problem number two. This is a little more heavy duty, but still, you know, these problems can get a lot harder. So I'm not showing you guys like the hardest that there is, I just want to show you guys a kind of bite size, but you know, still not trivial problem so you guys can get the ideas. All right, so here we have A's, B's, and C's, and we have the sum of these three, all, three different three-digit numbers is 2012. 
All right. So approach one might be focus on the right side. So maybe from the first problem you're thinking, well, A plus B plus C, let's start with the one digit of a two. But the problem with doing this is that there are so many possibilities that end in two. For example, it could be zero, zero, two, one, one, zero. It could even be like eight, four, zero, because that would be a 12 and something would carry over. So the bottom line is you're gonna have dozens of possibilities if you do it this way. Another approach, so A2 might be just random guessing and checking or maybe organized guessing and checking. We literally just check all the possibilities from zero through nine or from one through nine for each letter. The problem with these, again, is that there are a lot of cases and we do not want a lot of cases. So what can we do? We're gonna scan the entire problem and see, okay, this is not good because we have too much freedom here of getting that too. However, if we scan and see, oh my God, that, that's just all A's, so there shouldn't be a lot of ways to get this to work. And in fact, that's the better way to focus. So we're gonna scan and notice that the left side is more promising. So we could see that if we try any number from one through five for A, there's no hope this is gonna get us 2,000. So for example, 100 something plus 100 something plus 100 something will be 300 something plus some carryovers all the way up to five. So for example, let's set eight to five. We'll have 500 something, 500 something, 500 something. So that's 1500. And then we need to make up another 500 over here. But these are all two digit numbers. So they can't be more than a 100 a piece. So three of those would be at most 300. So we're not gonna get above 1800 if we set eight to five. So now let's go the other way. If A is very high, like seven through nine, if A is a seven, then we already have 700 three times. So that's 2100. So obviously anything higher won't work as well. So that means if we start at the right spot, boom, we got it that A or has to be six. Now, once we figure that out, you know, I, I wanna really emphasize that makes the problem tremendously easier. So now instead of having this crazy problem, we already know all of these are sixes just to, so you guys can see this is still a B, that's a B, that's a C. So what I, there's no, you don't have to do this next step, but I like to do this just to make our lives a bit easier. I'm gonna plug A in, and then I'm gonna actually subtract off the value of all these sixes so we can just work with the, the rest of the stuff that we wanna find. So how do we do that? Well, there are three 600s, so that's minus 1800. There are two 60s, so that's minus 120, and there's a six. So after I chopped off those three things, the only mystery parts are this B and BC. So B plus BC has to be 86. So now we've reduced the original problem to this problem. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. If we start on the right, there are too, mon too many possibilities to get a six. But if we start on the left, then we have pretty much one or two choices. So you might think, okay, B could be either like seven or eight. If you pick eight, then it also has to be an eight here, but then you'd have 80 something plus eight, that's already above 86. That's already 88 plus whatever C is. So even if C is zero, it still will be 88. So that's why seven is the only one that works. And once we have that B is seven, that means if this is a seven, C has to be a nine so that they add up to end in a six. So that's it, that's how you do these problems. Now, depending on the difficulty of the problem, there might be many more steps or even many more cases, but generally you wanna look for an insight. So scan the, when you see these, don't just jump in wherever or just pick, you know, pick a side, uh, pick one of the two left or right sides. Find a promising place to start to limit our cases. I'll leave you guys with that. I'll see you guys in the next video.